And welcome again to Emil Guillermo's A Mock Takeout, a podcast brought to you by the ALDEF blog at www.aaldef.org slash blog. If you read my piece there, then, then you know, you know this story, the story of Dr. Alan Bergano, a Virginia Beach dentist who sued the city for displacement costs after a road widening. It's called eminent domain, right? And the city was trying to pull a fast one. After offering other dentists up to $500,000, it offered Bergano a Filipino American nothing. Said he wasn't displaced any longer and told him he couldn't appeal. So he sued in federal court. His sense of Asian American history told him to fight. But Bergano, who testified in his case earlier in February, admitted to me he was still worried about the outcome. Well, I was I was scared, downright scared. Mm-hmm. I have no support mm-hmm. system here <laughs> mm-hmm. because all my all my uh, uh, knowledgeable uh, resources of, of of community activism on, on how to stand mm-hmm. up and fight for your rights they're all back in Seattle, <laughs> and I'm over mm-hmm. here like the only the only guy out here where I, I'm, I'm, I live in a, a, a community, a Filipino-American community that's relatively young, who's never had mm-hmm. to fight the type of trial, trials and tribulations as, as we did back in Seattle, where we have at least mm-hmm. two generations that had to mm-hmm. uh, weather the, the beatdowns of discrimination and racism, like my father who came in the 20s, you know, the positively no mm-hmm. Filipinos allowed, was littered all over the place. He could not own land, he could not own a house. Uh, couldn't live in certain parts of the city, but then instead of uh, you know crying about it, you know he just dug it, sucked, sucked it up, and took the abuse and uh, did odd jobs. He worked hard and he was able to go through the depression and and go to college. He paid his own college, his way through college and got a college degree, pharmacy, you know, Oregon State University in 1936. But he could not practice pharmacy because you have to be an American citizen. And since he was Filipino, you couldn't become an American citizen. But the fact of the matter is, it's, it's the sacrifice that, 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 that he went through, like my uncles went through. Because they knew that one day, uh, uh, their descendants, like me, his son, wouldn't have to put up with that crap. And, 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 yeah. and they opened that door of opportunity for me you know, to, to benefit from. And that's what... So I, even, though, even though you were scared, you had this sense of history... Yes, that absolutely. Provided this. some momentum to keep going and to stand up for yourself. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I tell you, no, know I'm Emil. There's no way I was going to not fight this because when I took up this fight, this really was not about me. This is about mm-hmm. all all the people that came before me. Because not only my mm-hmm. father in the twenties, but then now you're talking about Uncle Fred Cordova, uh, Auntie Dorothy Cordova in the sixties, Uncle Bob Santos, Uncle Mike Castellano, you know Roy Flores. These are the heavy hitters in the sixties who took who took uh, uh, went up to the plate, and now you're talking about affirmative action. Because at the University of Washington, it was an extremely white school, especially in dentistry, uh, they opened that door. Where I became, was able to come in and become the first Filipino-American dentist to graduate from the University of Washington. So, again, I represent those that fought for me in the past. So I honor yeah. my mentors by, by fighting back. There's no way. So, all right. So you knew that all of these things that were happening to you, uh, you know, the way that the city was treating you was kind of part of this legacy that had happened to all the Filipinos before you in Absolutely, some way. Absolutely, because, uh, you know, being Filipino-American, I, I tell people, expect to be treated differently. And it's a question of how are you going to react to it. And that's what I've, I've, I'm telling people is that if you don't know the his, history and understand that you have an obligation to not only, you know, honor those that came before you, but also to inspire those that are coming after you. Because now you have another generation that sees that, yeah, you can fight City Hall, you know, based on, uh, uh, you know, not just the facts, but then you have to be spiritually uh, inspired. And I think that's what it was, is because of my strong sense of history and obligation and, you know, pride of being Filipino-American, you know, there's no way I'm going to go down without a fight. Yeah, so I you go you too, and email. have the... 
<laughs> people like you that, that supported me. We were at the Fonz conference. Everybody was going, Alan, I'm with you. And that's what I needed to hear. Because again, yeah. Filipino Americans here on the East Coast, they don't, they didn't have to go through the stuff that we did on the West Coast. And it's just, it's very, very comforting that you have your colleagues, you know, even though they're across the country, but you know, a little, you know, what do you call those things? Texts or even Facebook yeah. messages and just say, hey, we're yeah. with you. And I felt it, you know, and, and, and that, that, that thanks to social media, you know, I could do anything. Anybody could do anything if you could, knowing that you got people in your corner. Yeah, so I noticed that it was you had uh, a good social media presence that let Filipinos and Asian Americans around the country know what you were fighting, and yet you were still scared going up to the trial, not knowing what exactly would happen. You were you had some spiritual momentum. So what happened on the date of the trial when you well the, just last prior week? to the, the prior to the the day of the trial on Sunday, I went to church twice. <laughs> oh, I had to pray. I had to pray to God. I said, Lord, 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 you know, you know, I'm just trying to do the right thing here. So, you know, I'm, I'm very, very religious and Wynn is very, very religious, but, you know, prayer, the power of prayer. Yeah. I got down on my knees and prayed the heck. But then again, yeah. uh, 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 I would have to say is I was very, very fortunate to have a tremendous law team that, that that's very knowledgeable in in, in not just eminent domain, but the way you're supposed to talk in the, in the court, in, in, in court. Because, yeah. you know, a lay person yeah. like me, I'm thinking, okay, I'm in, I either win or I lose. And I didn't realize that we're fighting three counts. So I said, what the hell are you talking about? You know, and then he, they started to run it down. I said, oh, I didn't know that. But uh, Yeah. All right. So all right, let's break down the, the issues now that you go into the court. The city, the city is saying, here's your, well, they didn't want to, you, you rejected their 115,000 settlement, but they're essentially saying you shouldn't get any money, yes. right? They, they, they're saying and, that I, mean, I was not a displaced person. And if I'm hmm. not being displaced, I am not entitled to relocation benefits. And this is a landmark case because uh, prior to my case, that was kind of, there was a, a fine line or there was a, a very hazy line to, to determine whether if a display oh, number one, what is a displaced person? You know, mm. and in my case here, the fact that I had a signed lease showing the intent, mm -hmm. you know, to to move out, is enough. Because mm -hmm. you can't just mm -hmm. uh, what what the city was banking on was I had to physically move things into another location to say I'm not being displaced. Whereas my lawyers uh, explained that hey, with a lease. And we have all this stuff ready to go, you know, it, that shows that we were going to move. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so that's, mm -hmm. I believe. So that that was the smoking yes. gun? That was yes. really. I believe. Yeah. I'm not, you all need right, to talk so, to my lawyer about that, Emil, but I'm pretty sure that's what, what, yeah. what, what the landmark case was, is that if you are displaced because of a, a city or federal project, like a road opening, you are entitled to relocation benefits. And then, and the fact that they didn't give it to you, that was, was that determined to be discriminatory? No, how, did, how did they see it? It was unconstitutional. I, uh, my, uncon was my constitutional rights of equal protection at, under the Unequal Protection mm -hmm. Act was violated. I mean, uh, the, right. the brochure that was given to me was unconstitutional. And, and my lawyer showed, you know, the different uh, paragraphs and so forth and so on that that's just not, you know, constitutional. And so that's and that's so, what the city was going. In, in other on. words, <laughs> right. So the city gave you bad information that denied you your your equal protection Correct. rights under the Constitution, and, and I had no and due process. That was being used no as no due process. In other words, right. I couldn't even appeal. I was given no explanation, and and they thought uh, because I was Filipino that I would roll over and say nothing, but they didn't realize. Do you think huh? that? Wait, do you absolutely, think that, Alan, absolutely. really do you... I mean, you know, another thing was, uh, was, uh, uh, that we were talking about was, was discrimination, but they threw that out and I, you know, I don't blame them, but we threw that in there because, uh, <laughs> because, uh, um, we wanted to make sure that Filipino was in the court record because <laughs> you know how it is, Emil, when you're wondering, is this guy Filipino, Bergano? He sounds Filipino. <laughs> but now it's in the <laughs> right, record right. so that in the future, yes, 
there's a man that went in federal court. He's Filipino and he freaking won. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but to so, me, but to so me, wait, I, uh, somebody yeah. that's been born and raised around discrimination and racism his entire life, mm -hmm. it's obvious. It's blatant. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 out of the three dentists, you had two white males. They received 200, mm -hmm. one received 280,000. The other one was 200 and uh, um, uh, almost 300,000. And the third one was African American mm -hmm. female. She's the one that received $525,000. You see? Mm -hmm. But then when it comes to the Filipino, oh, I don't think they're going to fight it. They're not even going to object. So we're going to give them nothing. You see the picture? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they thought I was some type, of, some type of passive Asian and don't realize the background that I come from, the, the history that I stand on, they have a rude awakening. And, and I gave it to them, Emil. I gave it to them. And what can the city do? Well, see, what the judge, well, first of all, before the city, uh, before the judge uh, gave his decision or verdict, he went through like a five minute uh, uh, dissertation as far as how how embarrassed the city of Virginia Beach treated me. You know, he said, here's a man that's put 30 years into building this community. He's he's law abiding. He's hard working. And uh, it's just a shame. It should not even he should not have been treated like that. And uh, and we and I when we heard, you know, the way the way he was talking, you know, we were crying because it's almost like a redemption for our ancestors that had to go mm -hmm. through it, you know, and I felt, you know, mm -hmm. I just, I was just breaking down. I just could not believe he was actually saying that. So his final verdict was, uh, we won on all three counts as far as, uh, the city, you know, deep deprived our, our, con our constitutional rights of equal protection, um, no due mm -hmm. process yeah. and also no relocation benefits for a displaced person. He ruled in our favor and that he was going to award damages. It was just a total breakdown in, in the process because they, now the good thing is the city has to review the process and, and come up with a better one, which is good because I don't want to see another small business, you know, go through this thing or better yet. I don't want to see, you know, future, not just Filipinos, but future, you know, small businesses that are being, you know, displaced. They don't have to, they, because of my case, because of the way I fought it and won, now, again, it's the way they're interpreting what is being displaced. And if you are affected by a road project or any, you know, that type of endeavor, you are considered and entitled to have relocation benefits. And that's huge. And that's Dr. Alan Bergano of Virginia Beach, a dentist who won his eminent domain case and learn the importance of the federal judiciary in the process, uh, the judiciary being a check on government power. I'm Emil Guillermo. Join us again next time for our Amok Takeout on the Aldef blog.